everybody, my name is Abby and welcome back to my Practically Imperfect Life. Today's video is part of an open collaboration with Abby from Rooted in Rest and Jessica from the Waldeck Way. Every month they host the Homeschool Show and Tell series and they give us a topic related to homeschooling to create a video playlist about. And this month we are talking about favorite subjects. Now I have high school students and my favorite subject to teach or to do with my students might surprise you. It is chemistry. And I think that's surprising because you're going to hear a lot of people say things like literature or history. I think history just tends to be a favorite for a lot of families. But I really do enjoy teaching and doing chemistry with my oldest. And next year, I'll get a chance to do the course again with my younger, my younger student. I love the sciences. And I think, especially in the high school levels, a lot of parents get intimidated at the thought of teaching those upper level science courses, either because it's been, you know, long since you've done the course yourself, maybe you just weren't all that into that subject when you were a student. Um, maybe it just seems confusing and you're worried you're not going to teach it right. But I think the sciences can be a lot of fun and we have a unique opportunity as homeschoolers to slow the pace down if we need to make sure that our students have good understanding and really incorporate a lot of different ways to kind of bring the subjects alive for them and really ensure their understanding of the material. Because uh, these are important subjects, whether you're talking about biology, chemistry, or physics. I mean, these are, you know, things that help explain why things work the way they work in the world. And I think that's one of the reasons why I really enjoy chemistry. You know, fundamentally, um, it teaches how things react and interact everywhere, you know, within our own bodies, within the atmosphere, between plants in the air, uh, what happens when, you know, things are, are working in terms of like batteries and microwaves and our cars. I mean, it explains why all that stuff works the way it works. And I think that's just kind of the beauty of it. Um, I also like that, I mean, there is this kind of this set of rules that things follow, right? There's a, a certain way two things are going to react when you put them together because of, you know, certain factors that are in play. And it just amazes me to think that, you know, when God created this whole universe, he put a set of rules and orders in place that everything follows. And I think there's just a, a beauty to that. And it's amazing to think of all of the details that he put in place when he created the universe. So I just, I love that. I just love kind of the, the way it's just so orderly in a very disorderly world, if that makes sense. So as far as specifics of what we use, we use Discovering Design with Chemistry written by Dr. Jay Wiley. This is from Barry and Builders. We have been big fans of the curriculum he has written for many years. We did a lot of his programs that he had written previously for Apologia during middle school. And um, I got a chance to meet him and talk to him at the Great Homeschooling Convention last year. I just love the way that he explains things in his, in his textbooks. It is very conversational with the student. And he takes the time to put in real life examples over and over and over again. And with a subject like chemistry, I think that's really important not to just give, you know, here's this list of rules, here's this list of laws, here's this list of equations, but how does this actually play out in everyday life? Why is this pertinent to you? And why should you care about learning it? And I just love the way he does that. It also has really fantastic detailed explanations for different types of problems. Chemistry is heavy on math. It just is. There's a lot of math in chemistry. And that can be confusing for students as far as how to work out problems. But whenever he does a problem in the book or a what they call comprehension questions, uh, there are really detailed explanations for each and every one. He'll take you through every single step that you need to do to solve that problem, um, including showing you know where things are canceling out and where things are um, getting added or divided or multiplied, how you're rearranging equations. 
it's just incredibly detailed and it helps your students learn how it is they're supposed to go about solving those types of equations or problems. There also is the student workbook. And so this is my daughter's here. It's a pretty good size workbook. It has a place in there for you to work out all of the different comprehension questions that are mentioned throughout the textbook. Some of them will be things like giving a definition or explaining a theory or a law. Sometimes it's balancing equations, working out problems, or even just providing an explanation about what would happen in a given situation just to check their understanding. So the comprehension questions really help you to kind of review the material along the way, and they are assigned um, to go with different readings. They do provide you with kind of a guide as far as how to break things down day to day if you, you know, wish to follow something like that. Um, it, there also is a chapter review. So at the end of each chapter, there's uh, questions that, again, cover all of the main concepts from the chapter, including definitions they need to know. Um, and then I have the test book and answer key as well. So it has a test for every chapter. It has the solutions for those tests with an explanation. So it's not just, you know, here's the answer. Here's how you get that answer. And it has the same thing in there for the chapter review, which is really nice because when my daughter does the chapter review problems, then we can go back through them. And if she's stuck on something and I need a little bit of a reminder on how to solve something, I can look at that and be able to kind of guide her step by step. Instead of just giving her the answer, I could say, okay, it looks like you're stuck here. So let's, let's try this and then see if you can get it from there. So I find that really helpful for just kind of following along and being able to help my daughter with the course. So one of my favorite things about teaching chemistry is getting to do the experiments with my daughter. Now, do you have to do a lab component to make it a chemistry course? No. I mean, definitely check and see if your state has a requirement for a lab component. But I, again, I find the labs a great way to put these concepts into practice, actually see them in action and see them working. And there are a lot of great experiments in, in this textbook. Now, I do like how detailed they are. So this is an example of what an experiment page would look like. So all of this in green. And if you don't do the experiment, maybe if you don't have the materials or you don't have time to do it, or um, maybe you do it and it doesn't seem like it worked out right, immediately following the experiment in the textbook is an explanation of what should have happened and why. And so I feel like that's that's really great to have in there because do all of our experiments work out perfectly? No, <laughs> but the majority of them have actually worked out the way they were intended. And um, my daughter has definitely enjoyed getting a chance to do those. Now we do utilize a kit that we purchased from um, Home Science Tools. So Home Science Tools and Nature's Workshop are two really great resources if you have to do a lab in a course. You can simply search by the curriculum that you're doing or by the subject you're doing. And for different curriculums, they will have kits put together for the different science courses. So for example, I would go in and I'd search for barium builders and I would search for chemistry. And then I would make sure that I'm picking the kit that goes with the textbook edition that I'm doing. Um, that's really important too, especially if you do any of the Apologia programs because they typically will have new editions every couple of years. And what it is that they cover in the labs might vary based on which edition textbook you have. So if you go to those websites, they're really fantastic kits to get. Um, they can be a little bit on the pricey side sometimes, but I find for the convenience of having all of those materials together and not having to, you know, hunt around and find weird random things, it's definitely worth it. Now for chemistry, it does include things like a Bunsen burner, different size beakers, um, uh, graduated cylinders, different types of chemicals that we're going to need to have um, and, and different elements that we're going to use in the different experiments. And there's a good amount provided of each of those things. In fact, uh, my son is gonna do this course next year and I don't think we're going to need to order anything. I think we have enough left of just about all of the materials that he should be able to do the experiments next year without us needing to purchase the kit again. So that is something to think about as well. If you have got children of different ages and another one is going to have to follow along in doing chemistry, it's a really good investment in my opinion because the materials can be used for several years. But we really do enjoy including the experiment component. Now, early on in most chemistry courses, students are introduced to the periodic table of elements 
and to the composition of atoms. So what's inside the nucleus? Where are electrons moving around that nucleus? And how does that impact what that atom is going to do? You know, why is it that two hydrogens and an oxygen come together to form a water molecule? Well, it's all explained by the arrangement of electrons around them. When it comes to things like that, it can be helpful to be able to kind of put things into a three-dimensional form, um, being able to create models and see you know, how these things work. We actually had initially started by just pulling out different colored M&Ms when we were talking about the arrangement of electrons around different, um, different atoms nuclei. So we, we were creating it on the table with M&Ms and that was kind of an eye opener for me. My, my daughter just really uh, got it when we did that. And so I went ahead and I did purchase um, a model kit. So this is the one I have, I got it on Amazon and there we go. And I will link it down below. So it has a lot of really great things in it. Um, there are different size, kind of like little balls here and things to make the bonds between um, different molecules and things like that. So what this does is it gives us a guide here. So for example, it tells me like the small white balls are hydrogen, black ones are carbon, orange is oxygen and is nitrogen and things like that. So with this, they can create models of different molecules and see what the shape is when things come together. Cause shape also goes, comes into play when you're talking about why things react the way they do. So we just found this to be really helpful. It was a step up from our M&Ms. <laughs> Not that you have to purchase something like this. I, I totally would still go for the M&M method of teaching. I think that was um, a really good way to introduce the whole idea of valence electrons and things like that. But uh, this was extremely helpful as far as being able to see kind of the shapes that different molecules uh, make and thinking about, again, why do things react the way they do or, or act the way they do in, in nature based on the way things are arranged. So I do highly encourage anything you can do to kind of give your student a manipulative or something to help them better visualize these concepts, whether that be labs, whether that be using food, whether that be using a model kit, something um, just kind of helps bring these things alive for them. So I did wanna provide a couple of tips to anyone who had a high school age student getting ready to do chemistry. Um, my first tip would be to talk to them about what it is that they think they might wanna study in college if college is um, on their agenda. The reason why I say that is because if they are going into anything healthcare related, you know, pharmacy, nursing, if they look, wanna go to med school, um, if they are going to do anything related to like engineering, um, if they want to have any kind of a science degree, you are gonna to wanna to make sure that they do have a pretty thorough chemistry course in high school and definitely one that includes the math components of things. Um, they are gonna to need to know how to do the equations and things like that. I do really like Barium Builders. I feel like this is a really solid chemistry course. And I say that um, as someone with a chemistry degree. So that was one of my majors in college was chemistry. So um, I feel like this would well prepare any student for an upper level chemistry course, whether they're looking to do advanced chemistry, AP chemistry, or uh, they'll simply be waiting until their next college chemistry course. This one is definitely very well-rounded. It covers all of the things that a, a initial chemistry course needs to cover. And it includes lots of good practice on the math components of chemistry. So that would be my first thing, would be to talk to your student about what their future plans might be. Might be. If they are looking to go into a field that does not require chemistry at all, like they, they're never gonna have to take a college chemistry course, um, maybe they just, they hate all things math. There are definitely courses you can look at that don't have the math component included. Um, I would highly recommend you check out Chemistry in the Kitchen from Guest Hollow. That is a chemistry course that focuses on teaching the concepts and showing them through food reactions. So you uh, learn about different chemistry components and then you, you put it in action by baking things, basically. Um, so I think it's a really fascinating way to teach chemistry concepts. There is a little like four week 
kind of intro to that course if your student has not taken any kind of chemistry before that talks a little more specifically on on chemistry basics uh things like you know what are elements and what are atoms and things like that kind of giving them kind of a, a chemistry 101 uh, type intro before they are diving into the meat and potatoes of that curriculum but that's just a good option again if you have a student who doesn't need to have um, the math part of chemistry my second recommendation is for those who are looking to have that math component in your chemistry class make sure your student has at least taken algebra one so much of how we do math and chemistry pulls from algebra concepts and if your student has not taken algebra, they will most likely struggle with the math that you find in the chemistry course. If they've at least got algebra, algebra one under their belt, they will be able to tackle these math problems so much easier. It'll be much less stressful for them as a student and for you as a teacher. My third suggestion is to make sure that you do have a good teacher guide or solutions manual for your course. The solution manuals are just extremely helpful for being able to see how problems are solved. Most of my experience has been with Apologia and Barium Builders and either one of those courses, the solution manuals for the teachers have been very thorough as far as showing how to solve problems and giving a good explanation about why an answer is what it is. I think that's just really helpful for us, especially if you're not super familiar with chemistry concepts and your student gets stuck. Again, rather than just giving them the answer, you can kind of see at what point they got stuck in the salute, in solving that problem and just give them some guidance. And sometimes just giving them that little bit of a hint will help them be able to solve it the rest of the way. And if they're totally lost, then you know you have that to sit there and kind of walk them through the problem step by step. Kind of going along with that, I would recommend you kind of look ahead at what it is your student is going to be studying. You know, flip through their chapter, just make sure that you've kind of seen what some of the key things are that they're going to be looking at. Flip through the teacher guide, make sure that you've got a rough idea on how these problems are solved. You know, this, this is one of those courses where you may decide that you're going to direct teach it to your student. Maybe they're doing an online course. Maybe you're having them do the whole thing independently, but whichever way they're doing it, at some point, they're probably going to come to you with a question. And just by kind of having a, a general knowledge of what it is that they're doing is just really helpful for being able to assist them kind of as needed or at least give them some guidance. And my last suggestion is to incorporate some fun into the course, whether that's by doing labs and experiments, having hands-on manipulatives, using food to design an atom, incorporate some fun into the class. There are some YouTube videos out there, I mean lots and lots of YouTube videos, of people demonstrating different chemistry experiments or some different reactions, and they are just amazing to watch and a lot of fun. So there are so many different ways that you can just kind of bring those things into the course and help your students see these things and understand these concepts and not get so bogged down with just the, the reading and the problem solving part of chemistry. So that's a little bit about why chemistry is my favorite course to teach and how we approach it in our homeschool. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe down below to my channel. And don't forget to check out all of the other amazing videos on this month's homeschool show and tell playlist. Thanks again for joining me today, everybody. Happy homeschooling. Mm -hmm.